Over the years, I've bought a whole bunch of cameras. I love buying cameras and I love photography. Here's just a few. This is one of my favorite ones. This is the Lumix GF1. It's just a fantastic little camera. It's really, really old now, but the quality of the photos is extraordinary and also video actually. And it's got this super fast pancake lens. It's a beautiful little thing. You can still pick them up on eBay. It's a great camera. This one here is the Nikon D7000. Cool camera, really good quality. I mean, it's, it's robust. This one here is the Nikon D70. Let me see, I bought a lot of these. This is only a few of them as well, I bought loads. And this is my newest one, I guess, possibly. This is the Fuji X100V. This is getting a lot of uh, love on TikTok and also Instagram and on the web generally because it's, well, it looks beautiful. You can see it's an absolutely beautiful looking thing. And it just takes fantastic photos and it's kind of point and shoot, but you can also dial in your own, they call them recipes, so your own settings. And it has these fantastic kind of uh, film emulations from Fuji, so the quality is amazing. But the one thing these cameras have all got in common is they haven't been used as much as they should have been. Uh, they kind of sat on the shelves a lot. And for me, routine is one of the most important things when you're being creative, that you set a routine and then you follow it because I think then you do more of it. And one of the reasons I didn't use these is because of the friction there was from getting taking the photo and then um, getting it online. And I've been thinking about this for a while and I think what I've come up with is the perfect photo journal <laughs> workflow for me. So I can take a ca uh, photo and it can be on a phone as well. And then I can upload it to my website. One of the important things is that I wanted to upload it to my website that I own and I can display it in the way that I want. And I do this daily and I've created a little photo journal. And I think having a daily photo journal is such a great way to not force you, but to kind of impose a routine on you. So every single day now I'm taking my camera out with me, which is new. I didn't do that before. And I'm taking photos and my love of photography is starting to bloom once again, just because I've I kind of got this process now where it's so easy and delightful for me to take a photo and upload it um, to my website and display it in the way that I want. It's kind of opened up a whole new world. So that's what I want to show you today. Right, to show you how seamless this process is, fingers crossed, I'm going to take a photo with my camera and then show you how I upload it to my website within just a couple of seconds. So I'm gonna take a photo of you, which is a bit strange. So can you all smile, please smile? Yep, stop doing that. No, that's not acceptable. Smile, here we go, one, two, three. Right, so there's my photo, not terribly exciting. And I'm just gonna download this to my phone. So this is the Fuji, which uh, they do have wireless software, so you can just wirelessly transmit it to your phone. Uh, but it's terrible and it doesn't work terribly well. So I've connected it to my phone, let me show you this and you'll see the 100V pops up there. So I'm just gonna click on that and I'm just gonna import it into my photo library. So that's now imported. Now all I have to do is I need to go onto my app. Now you can see here, I've got a little app which is connected to my WordPress website. So you can connect this to your WordPress websites and I'll show you how to do that. You click on that and you can see you just get one button that says select photo. So I'm gonna click on select photo and then I'm gonna choose photo library. And you'll see there's my brand new photo. Click on that. And there it is in the app. And I click done. And now all I have to do is give it a title if I want to. So I'm going to give it a title. Let's call it um, YouTube. Just type in YouTube like so. And then all I have to do is click publish. And you can see now, hopefully, that it's publishing. And it's basically uploading it to my photo journal that I created within my WordPress website. It's going to publish it. There we go, now it's published it. Now on the screen, you can see my actual live website. And if I reload this, we should see my brand new photo. There you all are looking beautiful, I can say. <laughs> I can see you all, hello. And there you go, within an instant, I've got this beautiful photo journal up and running. So if you want to start your own photo journal, these are the steps you need to go. So firstly, go to poodlephotos.com. This is the app that I designed and check out last week's video that I did to show you how to build your own app. So if you want to customize an app just for your workflow, super easy, just use Bolt. Again, last week's um, tutorial will show you how to do that. But go to poodlephotos.com uh, and you'll see there's just an option here to select your photo and upload it like I showed you. But there's also a settings over here on the right. I'll put instructions on how to set these WordPress settings up. I've done it in a previous video, but you just put your WordPress URL, your username and your application password. So it's an incredibly secure way to do it. Once you've done that, then you upload your photos. Now the key bit I'm doing on the website is I'm automatically optimizing them using a brilliant plugin called Optimal. 
And why I really love Optimal is it keeps the original photo on the website. So I didn't want to faff around with editing these photos. I just want to take them and upload them directly to my website. And that's the friction-free workflow that I wanted. So what happens with Optimal is you take your photo with your camera and upload it to your website and it remains there. So it could be a really huge photo. But then Optimal just works in the background, whirring away, and it optimizes your image and stores it on the Optimal servers. And you get really, really good compression with no loss of quality. And then that's the image that actually serves um, from your website. So you can upload a huge image here. It optimizes it, Optimal doing its thing automatically. And it's free to start with. And then the, the um, image that your actual viewer sees is really, really small. Let me show you an example of this. So if I go to my media library, let's have a look at this moss tree here. This is one I took out for a walk yesterday. And you can see over on the right, it's actually two megs. So it's a fairly big um, file size. Probably I wouldn't want to upload that directly to my website. But if we can actually look at it here, this is a, how it appears on my website. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop here. And let's just have a look at it. So command I to not that command I command I let's do this. Yeah, command I to actually go and look at the size of it. And you can see here the one that's actually served. It's gone from two meg down to 143 K and I haven't had to do anything. Optimal is just doing its magic in the background. And let me just show you how this works. So there's tons of settings in here so you can configure it, but out of the box, it's really simple. You can just install the plugin and activate it. Again, I'll put a link in the description where you can go and get it. It's completely free to start with. And these are some of the settings that you can see. I won't go through them all, but you can, you can enable optimized image handling here. So when enable optimal will manage, optimize and serve all images on your website. So that'll be toggled by default. You can do things like scale images and lazy loading. You can um, have an error diagnosis tool, but it's worked seamlessly for me. And then you've got some more advanced settings in here. So you can say automatically use the best image format, network based optimization, serve CSS and uh, JavaScript through optimal. Honestly, the default settings, you're going to get some amazing compression without having to do anything. You can also do things like resize them. Uh, you can also see all your images in their cloud library. So for me, it's, it's kind of the perfect plugin, exactly what I wanted, because I can just upload photos directly from my lovely camera, keep the source of truth, because I want the source of truth images on my website, but the actual images that my users see are really, really small and fast. And then to get the display I wanted on my WordPress website, I went into the site editor, so appearance and editor. And then all I did here is I went to my templates and in my main blog template, which is the template that's showing my posts, I just told it to display just the title, the date and the actual post content. And you'll see here, I go to the query loop and the post template and then within here, as a group, but that's just got the title and the date. And then underneath there, I've just got the content and the content is my photo. So having this new workflow has really rekindled my love of photography, which is really what it's all about. Just taking more photographs, going out there with your camera and taking more photographs. And every day now, I'm religiously going out and looking at the world in a new way because I have this really easy workflow where I can go from camera to website. And again, it's my website, I control it, which is really important to me. So I recommend have a go. Um, I'll put all the instructions down in the description for you where you can go and start playing with my app that I created. Uh, but let me know what you think. Do you think that's the best workflow? Have you got other workflows that you use that you really love for photography? Obviously in my workflow, I'm not really editing the photos at all. I guess I could on the phone actually, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to go from camera to website in as little friction as possible. So I hope you found that useful and it inspires you like it has me to go off and take more photos. If you did enjoy it and you did find it useful, if you can hit the like button, it would be fantastic because it does make a huge, huge, huge difference in terms of how many people actually get to see this video. So thank you if you can hit that like button. Also, every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. If you want to see more videos just like this, hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I release a new one. Thank you so much for watching. Keep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.